Good morning. I am Father Ayappa. Today I am going to talk about relationships. There are thousands and thousands of relationships in the natural world. Uh, in nature, it is known as symbiosis. Symbiosis. Symbiosis means I depend on you and you depend on me. So this is how all life on earth is designed and structured. Earth is designed for relationships. Actually, it comes from the divine model. Any religion you take, they talk about gods in relationships and uh, they live in harmony and order. Even there are a pantheon of gods, but they live in a communion or communion. It's a relationship in Christianity, we call it one God and three persons. So they are living in symbiosis. I need you and you need me. So one God, three persons. They are, at the same time, they are separated. They have got their own individual identity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. In Hinduism, Brahma, Shiva, Vishnu. See, they got their unique identity. At the same time, they can come together, they can mingle like water mingling with milk or uh, 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 what is that, A strawberry nectar or uh, mingling with ice cream and uh, they are interpenetrated and intermingling and co inhering and uh, they are always together. There is no hierarchy actually. There is no hierarchy there. They are equals. That is the key element in divine moral. They are equal in beauty, majesty, sovereignty. So they can live forever and ever. <laughs> where there is hierarchy if father says in Christian God, I am superior to son. Son says, I am superior to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit says, I am superior to father and son. Or Holy Spirit says, no, no, I am inferior to son. And, <clears throat> and son says, no, 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 I am inferior to Holy Spirit and the father. No, they don't say that. In divine model, they are all equal. When there is hierarchy and then competition pops in, isn't it? When there is, I am big and you are small and there is always a power struggle. That is what we see in the natural world because they want to hold, they want to capture. They think that power is everything, power Without power, I'm useless. That is the way humans think. But gods, they don't do that. We are all equal. So they can live on forever and ever. Where there is hierarchy, inevitably there will be collapse. That is what earth has witnessed so far. One king usurping the power of the other king or son is usurping the power of the father and uh, his own son will usurp him later on or neighboring kings and come and depose the reigning king and they take the kingdoms. In India we have witnessed hundreds of kingdoms like that. Uh, Maurya Empire and uh, Gupta dynasty. 
Chera Soda Pandya in Tamil Nadu and in Karnataka Oisalas and um, uh, the Badami, Vadapi, Chalukyas and um, in Kanjipuram Pallavas they've all gone they all collapsed they have disappeared they went into oblivion in the history of the world only stones we see the remaining of their imperial beauty we see in temples and stones and palaces but they themselves disappeared because hierarchy hierarchy where there is egalitarian existence we can live forever and ever in order and harmony so now i was talking about symbiosis symbiosis marked by equality and non interference they don't interfere with each other like father son they don't cross cross their roles they do the same uh, forever so they found that the divine model is a perfect clone it's a perfect model for any physical creation so divine model is successful one got three persons so now they transfer the same model to the physical world the physical world is also structured in the same way the divine model is structured there are one god three persons on the physical world there is one life life is common to everybody isn't it life is defined by three essential components consumption reproduction adaptation these are the three words the life is defined so life is common to all creatures but they are different states like soil water air like three persons this is the combination soil water air so in our bodies we have three we have soil we call it carbon maybe 23% and we have water 70% and last air and all fire too volcanoes earthquakes tsunamis we have no that is fire element so what i am telling you is in the physical world one life biodiversity biodiversity there is 2 million species of animals and plants but they all have a common uh, thread uh, which is called life so same way so this is the equation i'm going to put it and uh, you can if you want to wrap your brain around this equation is easy to remember so i'm telling you in the divine model one god three persons you got that right in the physical world one life three elements so i call it in the divine model one god theo diversity theo means god in greek theos so one god theo diversity but in the physical world my equation is one life by your diversity so this is the equation one god theo diversity one life by your diversity so this all is structured in symbiosis symbiosis you can observe in the natural world here how they interact as i told you there are myriad of relationships there is soil water relationship there is air and water relationship there is soil and sun relationship there is animal and plant relationship and there is rock and organism relationship and there is human and animal relationship 
and there is human to human relationship there is human to plant relationship and there is plant to plant relationship there is there are myriad i can go on talk one hour about relationships how the natural world is being designed so only one thing is true relationship comes in three components again what are they one is uh, mutualism mutualistic relationship and the second one is i'll explain in short what it means the second one is commensalism again so relationship between two organisms and the third one is parasites parasitic citizen i'll explain so the first one is mutualistic in mutualistic it's very simple i benefit from you and you benefit from me it's very simple very simple so in the natural world we see so many relationships and benefit to each other for example in humans we have good bacteria in the body for example mouth intestine actually the food what we eat we can't digest if there are no mm, uh, what is that organisms in the stomach which uh, make the food digest so we have got lot of amoeba inside they are good amoeba in the mouth also they keep the health of the mouth they keep the health of the organs so we benefit from them and also they benefit from us because they take food and sustenance from our own body so they are not affecting us and uh, they are benefiting from us and we are also benefiting through them because they don't harm us in another simple example i want to give you is maybe butterflies or bees you see bees go to flowers and they take honey isn't it so it's a mutualistic flowers are giving honey to bees and bees are benefiting at the same time flowers are also benefiting because at the same time they are pollinated because bees without bees there is no pollination so the flowers and the plant and all the vegetation gets benefit from the bees that's a simple example for you so i benefit from you and you benefit from me these are the first component that is what we observe in the natural world the second one is a uh, commensalistic commensalism that's a very confusing word what is the commensalism mensa means table uh, we eat in the same table uh, sometime uh, one organism gets benefit another organism uh, doesn't get benefit so there are thousands of relationships for example uh, you know the gobi fish in the coral reef in the ocean uh, that fish lives in a, a, a plant like a sea plant and they call anemones and or a, a, a coral it looks like uh, uh, as a lot of tentacles and the fish lives inside when big fish comes to eat him he goes inside those small jungle and disappears so in this process that fish is benefiting the anemones or tentacles or that bush or the seaweed doesn't benefit at all and also not gets armed either okay the plant doesn't get benefit but there are some viruses in our body they uh not viruses some amoeba uh, they are not benefiting they are simply uh, giving you the best and keep the uh, organs uh, healthy 
And uh, there are so many insects, they do that. They don't get benefit at the same time. They help the plant life to live healthy. So the third one is parasitism. So this is the important one. Parasitism means parasites. What, what are they? They are viruses. They cause a lot of damage. Um, and uh, in this relationship, one organism gets benefit, another organism gets damaged. Yes, completely ruined, completely destroyed. So in our body we have so many things, like mosquito for example, he comes and he takes our blood and he is benefiting at the same time he is putting you in deep trouble called malaria and you get infected. And there are a lot of uh, uh, bad viruses uh, and the parasites and in our body itself and 24 hours our body immune system is fighting against them. And uh, there are white cells in our blood. They keep all these parasites out of the system. So in the natural world there are so many relationships of parasites and actually um, uh, a human himself I'm afraid is a parasite <laughs> because you take all the time from the natural world and you don't leave them unharmed but you always every time you take something you keep the planet earth harmed, harmed, spoiled, destroyed. You want to take natural resources from the earth but earth is damaged Earth is becoming exhausted and um, you want to take uh, eggs and uh, uh, meat from the chicken but chicken is not benefiting at all <laughs> and you are a parasite and you are eating them like pigs, cows and goats and fish. All of them you take but they don't benefit from you. I think only one species that is Homo sapiens, is not at all giving benefit to anybody on this planet Earth. Only selfishness. Take and take and take and take and take and take more. You don't give them back. That is wrong. That's why I call you humans, parasites. It is Homo sapiens is now ultimate parasite to the natural world. Actually we are causing cancer. I can call 7 billion cancer cells on this planet earth and we are causing planet earth lot of damage. So I think we have not yet uh, learned to become or to live in symbiosis. You are not at all ready. But everything on planet Earth is living on tight relationship called symbiosis, but we are out of it because the symbiosis we are lacking. We are lacking. Actually, in the recent encyclical, Pope Francis is talking about anthropocentrism in the third chapter, the human roots of our ecological crisis. So in that he discusses about the relativism, the anthropocentrism. So he's talking about um, anthropocentrism has costed uh, to planet Earth, costed planet Earth and the destruction, the loss of biodiversity, the loss of fresh water and uh, uh, pollution and uh, climate change. Who caused them? Only one species. The parasite called Homo sapiens. I we mean, think we have not yet established the link with the natural world. For the past four million years, the anthropologists say that uh, uh, we evolved uh, from primates, but so far we didn't make a connection. 
we see the link and we are existing outside the web of relationship i'm afraid if you want to continue your existence on planet earth i think we need to insert imbibe our own species in the chain of the web of life otherwise we are outside i mean we are just not participating in the uh, in the uh, underpinnings or the uh, working elements or the dynamics or the matrix uh, of the earth processes that is what we are lacking and uh, i'm afraid we are orphans yes when you don't belong to your community community when you don't imbibe yourself in the cosmic processes the natural processes in an ecosystem you are considered to be a exile orphan that's what the bible says when uh, uh abel kill cain god cursed him he became an exile he didn't find any peace i'm afraid that was uh cain i think cain killed abel i'm sorry i i just uh, told you i gave you a wrong information actually cain killed abel so the cain is now exile so i think all the 7 billion people we are all in the lineage of cain the killer because our uh, progenitor uh, adam gave birth to two sons the good son abel he was murdered by his own brother cain so now what we have is only progenitor is um cain so we are all his bloodline we are living uh, on the planet earth under the influence of his character his own dna so we are 7 billion cains we are 7 billion cains so we are all exiles so i'm afraid that we have severed our belonging to the natural world and today we are all roaming about and we are misunderstood that everything is created the whole chain the web of life we are destroying it i'm afraid when you destroy the natural world i think our extinction is inevitable i'm talking about this is a sixth mass extinction i think it is about only one species that is homo sapiens thank you